Hey all, uh, let's talk about terminals, PTYs and TTYs. This is going to be a brief overview with a few examples. So you might be familiar with the process of opening a terminal and running commands. Uh, you can even run scripts. So we have uh, a script here that's going to display the script name and the remaining arguments. So this uses argv, which is pretty common, which is basically the list of arguments passed to the program with the first element of the list being the program name. So if I run this, I can see uh, my script name as my script.py and the arguments I passed. When we run commands, pretty much the same thing happens. So if we run ls, then uh, we provide a path. We are running the ls program and uh, the path is its first argument. So anyway, what's happening here? So this is a terminal window running a terminal emulator and the program actually responsible of reading our commands and running them is the shell. In my case, it's ZSH, which is a type of shell, but you have other kinds such as bash, fish, and so on. So what goes on exactly? When I type the command, uh, ZSH parses that command and gets the command name. Then it looks for an executable file within a list of paths specified in a path variable. And then when it finds that uh, executable file, it forks a child process and, and makes the command run within that child process. Then the output of that process is displayed in standard output and standard error, which is then displayed into the screen. People used to connect to computers using physical terminals, such as the one we're looking at. These were basically keyboards with a textual screen. TTY or teletypewriter is the term used to refer to terminals, uh, physical or virtual. So even when physical terminals went away, TTY was still used to refer to virtual terminals. We have virtual consoles, which are terminals built into the Linux uh, kernel, and these have nothing to do with the graphical user interface, the GUI, and they are used when the GUI crashes or we are, if we're running in a headless mode, basically with no GUI at all. We also have terminal emulators, such as this one, and these are basically normal programs that run on top of the graphical user interface, but they emulate the behavior of a terminal. They rely on a, an OS functionality called PTY, or sudo terminals, which simulates the behavior of a terminal. We'll talk more about that later. So terminals can do more than output plain text. So if I type this, echo, I can see a colored word, an underlined word, and a bold word. These sequences are called ANSI escape codes. And what the, they, they basically do is that they indicate to the terminal what kind of formatting we want it to apply to the words. So this is, for instance, the color red. This resets the formatting. This is underlined. This is bold. And th there is a multitude of uh, ANSI escape codes. So you can underline, you can change the background, you can move the cursor around, you can do all sorts of things. You can even make sounds. So if I do this, the ANSI code 7 is going to actually make a bell sound, which is pretty cool. So these ANSI codes are a way for us to uh, to indicate to terminals how they should display and format the screen and how they should move the cursor around. We can have uh, we have a code to clear the screen and so on. So terminal emulate emulators are actually uh, where the the interpretation of these ANSI code characters is being done. So they have an internal representation of uh, these characters and each time we type something or we apply an escape code for each cell in the terminal screen the internal representation is updated so if i type uh, this I, I i display a red word then the terminal e emulator within its uh, internal representation of this screen it marks this cell as having a content of r and a, a text color of uh, red same for underline here, and you can combine formatting and all that. So using a terminal uh, library that understands NC code, we can do fun things such as uh, taking in a stream of NC codes that's supposed to be fed to a terminal 
and displaying it using HTML. So Pyte is a Python library that uh, parses ANSI codes. In this example, we feed it the same sequence we just uh, displayed in the terminal, and the library is capable of mapping that into an actual uh, representation of screen with each cell uh, indicating where it has a certain uh, foreground color, a certain background color, a certain, is it underlined, is it, in, is it bold, all that. And so we can do that, we can iterate over the cells in the screen as they are uh, parsed by this library and add uh, HTML files and for each cell uh, in the terminal, we map that to an actual uh, cell in HTML, and we end up with something that actually displays the terminal output in HTML. And what we did here is very inefficient, but I think it gives a sense of what's going on. So when we add these ANSI escape codes, we, it's as if we are describing CSS. It's just that the terminal has its own interpretation. And so what the actual terminal emulators do is that they use the native libraries of the, the operating system to display this, which is way more efficient and performant. When we run a program from the terminal, it's actually attached to a controlling terminal. So for instance, if I run this command and I go look for it in the list of running processes, I can see that it's attached to terminal QTTY049. And if I check the TTY from the uh, terminal tab I launched it from, I can see indeed that it is the same one. Processes can communicate with each other using signals. So if I start a process uh, using this command and I want to interrupt it, I hit control C. What happened here is by hitting control C, the terminal sent an interrupt signal to the process which caused it, caused it to be terminated. If I start the process again and I check its existence, so it's indeed here. If I close the parent terminal, the process is gonna be terminated, so I don't see it anymore. What happened is whenever the parent terminal is closed, uh, a sig hub signal is sent, which is a hang up signal to, get, to hang up all the processes linked to that terminal. If so when we start a terminal emulator, it's, it actually starts a sudo terminal behind the scenes. And sudo terminals or PTYs are uh, kernel functionality. So it's actually a syscall that opens uh, a sudo terminal and it creates two ends the terminal emulator is connect connected to one end and the uh, command is connected to another. And for the command, it's as if it's connected to an actual ter uh, terminal, so we are simulating the terminal behavior. So why do we need that? Why can't we just uh, have a shell and start a child process and, com and communicate with through pipes with standard in, standard out? Well, we need terminal behavior. But what does terminal behavior mean? So there's this thing called line discipline. And what line discipline is, is a bunch of useful stuff that the TTY kernel, uh, kernel module offers. So when we hit uh, backspace or delete and the character is actually deleted, this is offered by the TTY. When we type something, we are actually uh, sending input from the keyboard to the, to the process, but the process does not get the characters as we type them. It's and they are actually buffered and it's until we hit enter that the process gets the whole command. So this buffering is what we call cooked mode or canonical mode. So it's as opposed to raw mode where the process gets characters as they are typed. Some programs actually such as uh, text editors like Vim or TUI's text user interfaces switch the terminal to raw mode so they get the characters as they are typed because they want to handle things themselves. But in general, we'd like our terminals to be cooked <laughs> so we only get the command when we hit enter. One, one other thing uh, offered by the terminal functionality is echoing. So whenever we type, we see what we type back. This is handled by the TTY uh, module. So we can use uh, the STTY command to change uh, terminal options. 
So we can, for instance, disable canonical or cooked mode and uh, make our terminal raw. And the way we do that is using this. So now when I type something, I'm actually typing in raw mode. And if I hit the delete key, uh, characters are not deleted, but I'm instead seeing the ASCII representation of the delete key, which is interesting. I can also disable the echo mode and what happens is I'm actually typing but nothing is uh, appearing and this is me disabling the echoing functionality offered by TTY. Terminals also offer signal management so if I'm running a process and I want to interrupt it I press Control C. What happens behind the scenes is that uh, an interrupt signal is being dispatched to the process which is terminated. This is done using the TTY subsystem, basically terminal functionality. I can also control the flow of the terminal uh, using signals. So if I have a loop that's flooding my screen, I can actually uh, uh, stop uh, control the flow by hitting control S. And what this does, it's, it blocks the standard output of that uh, process, so the right uh, syscall of the child process is stuck on the is blocked on the right the process is not suspended it's just waiting for the standard output to 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 be available and when I hit control Q that standard output is available again and the process resumes and this flow control is uh, rather powerful and it's managed by the TTY subsystem as well Another interesting functionality PTY offers is window size and resizing events. So each terminal window has a size, a number of rows and columns, and whenever the window is resized, a signal is dispatched, so programs that rely on that size are made aware. So we're in TTY 16, and we're going to start a text editor. And we see that it's occupying the whole uh, terminal window. If we go to another tab and simulate uh, resize, so we do this. So what we're basically doing is we're, we're setting the rows attribute for the uh, TTY60 to 10. It's as if we're resizing the terminal so it has only 10 rows. We'll see that the text editor redraws itself to occupy only these 10 rows, which is pretty interesting. So the signal that is dispatched whenever a window is resized is called a sig win ch, w -I -N, w -I -N -C -H. and we can actually trap signals uh, in the shell. And so whenever a signal is dispatched, we can perform an action. So if we do the following, uh, so we're trapping the signal sig winch and whenever that signal is dispatched, we actually display the current size of the terminal window. So I run that command and I try a resize and we see the echo displayed and it's actually displaying the new size. So this uh, resize uh, notification system is pretty useful to programs such as uh, text editors or TUIs but also SSH. The way SSH works, so we have an SSH client which connect and we want to connect to a remote uh, machine, a remote server. And on that server, we have an SSH server running. When our SSH client opens a session with the remote server, that remote server is going to start a pseudo, pseudo terminal on that remote machine. Whenever we type something into the our SSH client that, that traverses the TCP session, the TCP connection uh, to the SSH server and gets forwarded from the SSH server to the process connected to the pseudo terminal. So for that uh, process running on the remote server, it's as if we're connected to it through a terminal, although that is simulated using the pseudo terminal. And whenever the window is resized on the local on our local machine that resize events event is dispatched to the ssh server and then again to the pty so that's why when we resize our local terminal the output we get matches the the, the, the dimensions of our window 
So as we can see, pseudo terminals or PTYs bring a lot to the table, like discipline, signals, window size and resize events, and these are essential to a working uh, terminal emulator. I hope uh, this has been informative. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.